All right, hello everybody. My name is Elizabeth Watson Fraser, and today I'm going to be talking about the effects that motor mimicry has on victim blaming. So before we begin, let's talk about the term victim blaming. What exactly does that mean? So victim blaming occurs when victims of abusive maltreatment are held responsible for what happened to them. Uh, anytime anybody questions what a victim could have done differently is participating in the culture of victim blaming some extent. Now, any degree of victim blaming is troublesome. However, victim blaming of sexual assault victims um, in the United States is a current widespread issue. Uh, we can use some examples <coughs> over here of some common victim blaming statements of sexual assault victims that you're probably familiar with, uh, such as, what was she wearing and she was asking for it. This has dire consequences for the victim. Uh, perhaps the most severe consequence is victims are failing to report the crime to trusted authorities. And due to their fear of re-victimization, future attacks are therefore more likely to occur. And research shows that the effects of victim blaming can be so debilitating that they are going to drop charges if they report it at all. Also, um, the effects of victim blaming is a cause of many rapists being acquitted. So in the United States, a majority of rapists will go, um, will not have to face their um, crimes. Um, out of every 1,000 rapes, 995 rapists will walk free. Only 230 cases are reported to the police, and 46 reports lead to arrests and 4.6 rapists will be incarcerated. So as you can see, that's, that's a real issue. Um, and perpetrators of sexual violence are the least likely category of criminal in the United States to go to prison. So there are some effects of victim blaming. Um, victims have a fear of not being believed. Um, they experience an abundance of self-blame. They are concerned with how the justice system will treat them. Uh, once they bring their claim to the awareness of authorities. And all of these lead to underreporting. So victim blaming is a cultural phenomenon and um, it has a it can have a psychological impact um, on a victim already trying to recover from abuse. <coughs> so if you blame a victim for a crime that happened to them, it's safe to say that you can't really picture yourself in their shoes. Um, you are projecting the blame onto the victim. Uh, you are not any external forces. So you could say that you lack empathy for a victim if you are a victim blaming them. So what exactly is empathy? Empathy is an emotional response to another's hardships. It is the process of being able to put yourself in their shoes. Let's take this um, figure over here for a visual definition of um, exactly what empathy um, happens. Now, at first glance, it might look like both of these figures have arrows in them. However, let's say the one on the right was the only one with an arrow in him. Um, but the one on the left was filled with so much empathy that he was able to put himself into the figure on the right's position and experience the pain as if it were his own. Now, past research establishes that negative emotions influence positive, I'm sorry, influence more empathic concern than positive emotions. And in regards to traumatizing experiences, when sexual assault victims are recounting their assault, there's going to be no positive emotions. It's going to be an abundance of negative emotions. And past research also shows that if you feel you're at risk um, of becoming a victim yourself in the future, then you are more likely to experience empathy towards a victim. So what else can influence empathy? Let's talk about the concept of motor mimicry. Um, Motor mimicry is imitating actions of a target as an observer. And past research um, has found that um, motor mimicry is a form of sympathy. However, it's an unconscious reflex that occurs while observing another person's emotions or actions. And um, we theorize that cognition then would not be readily understood by simply thinking. Um, one must engage in the act of doing. And they found that Imitation strengthens and observes emotion, however, it was unconscious due to the human brain's ability to mimic uh, others' mental activity. This would imply that empathy is a multidimensional concept, and empathy is 
then would be um, a construct of motor movements, affective, and cognitive processes. However, there was a missing link. Um, while past studies did show contributions of victim blaming and the effect that unconscious um, motor mimicry has on empathy, to my knowledge, the effect of conscious motor mimicry on victim blaming was unknown. So the study that I did attempted to fill in this gap, and I hypothesized that mimicking motor movements of the victim will increase empathy as shown by less victim blaming. To test this hypothesis, I had 32 participants. They were into two groups, and they both watched a video of a female victim recounting her sexual assault experience. Um, however, group number one was instructed to mimic the exact hand movements of um, the victim recounting her um, assault throughout the duration of the video. And group number two was assigned specific hand movements to do throughout the duration of the video that did not mimic the victim's hand movements. And after they both, both the groups watched the video, uh, they both took a survey that was designed to find victim blaming attributions. So I did an independent sample t-test to compare the mimicked response scores um, versus the assigned hand movement response scores. And it's important to understand that higher response scores indicated less victim blaming. So to represent a visual of my results, over here on the x-axis, we have our mimicked and the non-mimicked group. And over on the y-axis, we have the total response scores <laughs> um, from the participants. Survey, first answer. So in the mimicked group, we have um, over 900. And there was a significant difference um, in the mimicked group versus the non-mimicked group. Over here, they were, um, the non-mimicked group was here at 700. So these results supported the hypothesis that victim blaming um, would be, de be decreased if you're mimicking the exact motor movements of a victim. Um, and that was shown through the results because the mimicked group was less likely to blame the victim for what happened to them. And it also supported the previously mentioned past theories that negative emotions influence empathy, that motor mimicry can strengthen emotion, and that empathy develops by matching empathy can develop by matching your old responses. So the results of this study have the potential to be applied to the real world. Um, let's take, for instance, the education field. Um, let's say sensitivity training for police officers and other law enforcement officials. Um, during their training process, they can be advised to do similar physical movements, um, the, the body language while listening to the victim uh, recounting their experience. Uh, sensitivity to victims is important in police interviews in order to build trust so the victims feel comfortable enough sharing the sensitive uh, material that is necessary for a prosecution and to, to get a conviction. However, it's not always possible um, that everybody is going to follow that technique in the um, investigative um, processes. So this kind of opens up the door to some future research possibility that shouldn't be overlooked. Um, instead of having the observer mimic the victim's um, body movements, it would be interesting to see if the victim mimicked the observer's body language and movements. Um, would motor, motor mimicry still have an effect? Also, um, would that imply that motor mimicry itself um, is still a transfer of empathy no matter who initiated it? Does anybody have any questions? All right, do we have any questions? Have been done, Kelly, on um, verbal mimicry 
Exactly. Instead of move, instead of motor, just say what that person is saying. Feedback. No, actually, I haven't heard of any. You think that would be interesting. But you think it's something in the actual movements that um, helps the empathy? It would be interesting to test to see if um, verbal mimicry would have the same effects. So, uh, so I have one question about your uh, future research directions. Mm -hmm. So you were in that one suggesting that the motor mimicry effect might swing both ways so that it doesn't matter who initiates it. Right. So are you suggesting that as a, um, a strategy for people reporting the crime? Yes, yes and no. Um, it, it would be hard to, for victims to know to, to do that. However, I think that it's important to explore these avenues um, because of the fear of judgment that victims experience when they are reporting their crimes. So that could be a strategy, but... Any other questions? All right.